Thanks, Nathaniel. Thanks, everyone here and those watching on the live stream. Uh, so this is my fourth NASIS, but first time presenting, so bear with me. So back in April, I uh, posted this image on Twitter with a caption of seven years ago, I had gone out on my own and um, really enjoyed doing what I was doing. Didn't regret one minute of going out on my own, but actually got paid to do it. And someone suggested I um, give a presentation here to sort of talk about that. So, you know, this is my story. Uh, it's hopefully a little bit of an inspiration for anyone who might be thinking about going out on their own or recently has. Um, but, you know, it's certainly not a how-to. Um, you know, I, I don't claim to be an expert on, on how to write, run a business. Um, there's, you know, plenty of other people, some of which speaking after me, that are, I would consider more of an expert there. So, real quick, uh, you know, since it's my story, I need to give a little background, right? So, I grew up in southern Vermont. That's uh, where I probably grew to appreciate topography and green spaces. Uh, I went to Union College for undergraduate work uh, in geology. It's probably the first place I made a map on a computer, uh, which wasn't in a GIS, it was just a USGS topo map traced with canvas. Um, but from there, I went on to Brown University to get my master's again in geology, um, looking at past hurricane um, landings throughout the Northeast. And that was my first exposure to GIS, uh, ArcView 3.1 on a Sun microstation, I believe. Um, you know, overlaying sediment core locations on geo-referenced aerial photos, looking at uh, beach changes, marsh changes, things like that. So after that, I uh, still wasn't doing GIS as a career. I went into environmental consulting. Um, you know, spending lots of time standing next to drill rigs, um, spending a lot of time on industrial sites. Lots of time around solvents and chemicals and metals and fun stuff that's not good for your health. And so I decided, you know what, had enough. I really liked a little bit of GIS work that I had done. So I enrolled in Penn State's uh, post-baccalaureate certificate in GIS. And while I was doing that one year program, uh, I found a job at a community planning firm in Saratoga Springs, New York. Um, found that planners do a lot of mapping. They don't uh, have to deal with unfortunate stuff like petroleum and things like that. So, you know, some examples, uh, vision maps were a big thing in the planning world. Uh, a lot of simple base maps, you know, ortho photo, people can write on that sort of thing. Um, inventory mapping, um, you know, and this, this was where I sort of, you know, started to, uh, you know, find my style. I, the, the job I had, there was a lot of freedom to sort of experiment, try new styles, try new things, um, and it was a lot of fun. But seven years into that job, the, you know, it was a small company, and um, the amount of GIS work I was doing there had drastically gone down. Uh, the amount of planning work that I was doing and writing and fun, not so fun things like that had gone up. Um, that sort of carefree, loose uh, style that I was used to sort of changed. The old boss, uh, you know, be, you've got a, a new leadership, much more rigid uh, te templates, things like that. Um, my family expanded, uh, started thinking more and more about spending time at home versus at work. Um, my best friend at work, um, who'd been there all seven years that I worked there, moved to Austin. And, you know, it's a small company, th that things like that, dynamic changes quite a bit. And um, all those things, plus an underlying uh, mental health condition that I didn't know I had, uh, led to a major panic attack at a work function. And, um, you know, went to the hospital, thought I was having a heart attack, and the doctor said, oh, no, it's just a panic attack, no big deal. Um, anyone who's uh, had a panic attack, you know it's not, ju not just a big deal. For those who haven't, um, my little quick soapbox, read Kevin Love's article uh, in the Players' Tribune about what it's like to have a panic attack. It's spot on um, and gives a lot of insight. Okay, off the soapbox now. So all those factors, it was, you know, I, I had to make a change. So I've been thinking about it a while. That was sort of the, the wake up call. And so I decided to start my own business. And, you know, what exactly does that mean? Well, um, you know, there's the sort of legal aspect. What is a business? Is it a LLC? Is it incorporated? Is it an S-corp? Um, you know, for me, it was the quite simple, just a sole proprietorship. 
and I went one tiny step above and filed a form with a county clerk doing, a dis doing business as. So, you know, my business is me doing business as upstate GIS. Um, you know, there's things like insurance, um, you know, health insurance, of course, as a lot of people know, is very expensive. Thankfully, I'm fortunate enough to have a spouse who works in the school district who uh, has great benefits, and so that's one less thing I had to worry about. Um, you know, I'd create a website, and, um, you know, I created a website using iWeb. Any Mac people out there probably know iWeb is long since dead. Um, so to, up, to update this website, now I need to recreate it, unfortunately, which just hasn't been a high priority. Um, you know, business cards, um, you know, that's probably how I get my name out there the most. Um, you know, there's lots of options out there. I decided to go with one that has my services, a bunch of my services on the back. You know, someone pulls out my card two years from now, they remember, you know, why it is they have it, who I am, and look me up. You know, tons of equipment goes into, you know, having your own little GIS shop. Um, you know, this was the first computer, had built to order. I'm on my second computer, you know, five year life cycle. Seems good, not just for technology changes, but, uh, you know, after about five years, that blue screen of death starts to pop up every once in a while and gives you a heart attack and, you know, please, did I save. Um, so, you know, and some of the equipment I bought along the way um, based on need. So I started with just a laser, you know, color printer and then, um, you know, I had a project. People wanted 11 by 17 maps made. Rather than farm that out, I decided, you know, I'll buy a, a larger format printer so I can do my mapping in-house. You know, software, um, I'm a quote-unquote Esri shop. You know, I, I learned on 3.1 and I've just been going since then. So. You know, a lot of my maps, ArcMap, I started using Pro more recently. Um, and, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll go into Adobe, uh, InDesign, Photoshop primarily. Someday I'll hit that Illustrator learning curve, but not yet. Um, and then office space, you know, you need a place to work, right? So I have my humble little 8x8 eight eight office space, um, and, you know, it has the added advantage of being my little Star Wars shrine. So. Um, you know, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy going into the office every day just, just for that alone, if nothing else. So, you know, I've got the business set up. Now I, you know, need to do work, right? So how do you get clients? Well, for me, I started talking to a local land trust. Uh, that was sort of my target demographic was, was land trusts. And they unfortunately didn't have much, uh, but they referred me to a planning engineering firm uh, who had just lost their on-call GIS person. Um, and so I started doing a lot of work with them. Um, and then, you know, they had some clients that needed, uh, you know, small mapping project, small analysis project. They're a, you know, hundred and something person company. Th this thousand, two thousand dollar project wasn't worth their while. So they said, hey, talk to this guy. He can do it for you. So um, fortunate to get some, some work that way. You know, I still, I still do a lot of work for my old employer. Um, again, I said it was a small company. They don't have, you know, GIS experience in-house to speak of, so I do a lot of work with them. Some of the clients I worked with at that old firm, I've uh, been fortunate enough to continue to work with them. Some other people that I met uh, while working there um, led to some more relationships. You know, RFPs, requests for proposals, uh, not a lot of work there. A lot of, a lot of the RFP work I get is I'm a team member on a, on a bigger team, um, but I'll, I'll go through it in a minute about um, sort of one sort of tiered RFP approach that that, that end up working out. Um, social media, LinkedIn, um, not so much any other social media. Facebook was completely useless. Um, Twitter, I don't use for marketing. Twitter is for sanity check and, you know, talking to you guys and, you know, just avoiding real world stuff. Um, and then, you know, what I refer to as sort of right place, right time. You know, there was a a local um, real estate owner who had a property they were trying to sell. They wanted some, uh, you know, visual maps to sort of help sell their property, um, and ran into him, you know, in a coffee shop and made some maps. And then, um, sort of a local uh, independent planner. She used to work with a GIS person. He went and took a job with the county. She needed a GIS person. He put me in touch with her. So now we have a nice little partnership. She does the planning. I do the GIS. Um, and so, you know, the, what I'm hoping to convey here is, you know, a lot of this is relationships, whether it's uh, 
you know, having one client that's happy refer you to another client or just keeping the same client, you know, continually happy and continuing to do more work for them. Um, and so just to give you a sense of, of the types of clients, you know, um, the, the blue there, you know, planning engineering, these, these bubbles are income proportional. And so you can see about 80% of my income comes from planning engineering work. Um, about a third of my clients are land trusts, but unfortunately, you know, they don't have the same funding level uh, that others do. And then, you know, a handful of other industries that I've worked with. Uh, I tried the, you know, Etsy sort of artistic, you know, buy maps online sort of thing. And, you know, it was a fun experience. I enjoyed making these types of maps. Um, but I did not sell a single one in the last four or five years that, you know, they've been up there. And worse, you know, probably spent over $500, you know, because I, I, I printed a bunch of maps, bought a bunch of the mailing supplies in anticipation of sending them out, and that was probably not a wise move. So business-wise, that, not good. But, you know, just for my own cartographic, you know, styling and things like that, it, you know, wasn't a total waste. So, you know, just some, you know, work examples, things that did work. Um, you know, I mentioned RFPs. So, you know, the first project I got off of, off of a proposal, uh, there was a local land trust. They got some grant money to do some watershed education, and they wanted to do an educational poster and then an interactive web map. And so the poster, I felt confident, sure, I can do that. Um, interactive web map, I'd never done one of those before, but I knew about RTS online. I had access to it through my you know, Esri account. So I said, sure, I'll figure that out. And you know, thankfully, they hired me. Um, and you know, it was, it's a little clunky, but the map worked. And you know, they were happy. And several years later, they hired me again uh, for a bigger project. They were, wanted to prioritize areas for conservation in the county. Um, and so there was a lot of, a lot of analysis, a lot of bringing in existing data, creating new data. I ran 80-something viewshed analyses for the entire county, both on roads and high points, things like that. And was originally going to write a report, but then they decided they wanted to story map instead. And so I said, sure, I can put it together a story map, having never done that before. Um, but, you know, I figured it out. Um, and one other, another thing I had to figure out was how to get this huge prioritization data set up onto the story map. And so I discovered vector tiles, um, something I had never worked with before. And um, so I figured out how to make those in ArcGIS Online and, um, you know, thankfully was able to do that. And they were happy with the project. And so, you know, last year they started doing the same land trust, um, started doing work for a town. And, um, you know, they wanted some mapping done, so they hired me again, which was great. Um, and this was my first time doing all my mapping in ArcGIS Pro. And it was a fixed fee contract, which meant, you know, they were going to pay me the same amount of money whether I worked for 20 hours or 200 hours. And so I thought this would be a good opportunity to, you know, learn something new and get paid while I was doing it. But, you know, not all the mapping is sort of, you know, nice, what I consider aesthetically pleasing mapping. You know, there's a lot of this type of mapping, which is sort of humdrum, template, uh, utilitarian mapping. The plant engineering firm that I do a lot of work with, you know, I probably do two or three of these sets of maps, uh, you know, every week for a lot of environmental assessment forms that they need done and they need this sort of mapping. So it's not exciting, but, you know, it pays the bills. So speaking of paying the bills, anyone who's interested in going on your own, that's probably why you really want to know is, you know, can I make money doing this? Well, um, yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, the first few years, you know, I averaged a net income of probably about $20,000, which uh, wasn't a lot, but it was just enough to supplement uh, my wife's income. Uh, the first year was only a partial year, plus a lot of upfront costs, so that was a little, a little small. But then the last several years, um, you know, things have really picked up. A lot of people have gotten to know me, um, gotten some new clients, existing clients have asked me to do more and more stuff. So now, you know, I'm averaging closer to, you know, 45, 50,000 a year, and I project that'll probably stay that way in the foreseeable future. Um, you know, my old boss always used to say, work smarter, not harder. Uh, so, for example, the last year I worked there, the full year I worked there, I worked you know, around 2,000 hours with a gross pay of around 60,000, and that doesn't include the 300 hours of commuting time. And the past two years, I've worked around 800 hours a year, making about 53,000 a year. So, 
you know, I'm working 40% of the hours I used to work and, you know, making 90% of the income. And, you know, I think that's a fair trade-off. But, you know, it's not just the financials. Uh, there's more to it than that. You know, I mentioned my commute. You know, now my commute is five, out, five seconds to 30 seconds, depending upon if I stop and pet the dog on the way into the office. Um, you know, if I, if I go to my outdoor office, you know, it might, may take a little longer. Um, of course, the dog has to go there, too. Um, and, you know, I'm home, which is great. So when the kids go to school in the morning, I'm there. When the kids get off the bus, I'm there. When the nurse calls and says, your kids are sick, please come get them, which has happened far too often this fall, um, I'm there as well. And, you know, I'm making maps. So, you know, that's, that's the, the important thing is I, you know, occasionally, yes, I have to do some non-mapping stuff. But for the most part, you know, everything I do is maps or spatial analysis and that sort of thing. And so the whole quote unquote work-life balance for me, it's not a balance, you know, mapping is part of my life and there's, it's just a blurred line. There's, there is no, no balance to worry about. Um, so I'm happy to discuss anything business related with anyone. Um, I left a lot of stuff out in the interest of time. Um, I'm also happy to talk about anxiety stuff too, because you know, it's important to me and, um, or if you want to talk about, you know, Star Wars or whatever, I don't care. Hit me up on Twitter, send me an email, or see me later. Thanks.